She said, I literally hate when producers use samples. These artists be acting like they made the beat. I've sampled even fewer than five seconds of a track and they take everything. What's going down? Appreciate you tuning in to the At Odds podcast. We're back. The whole team is here. And this is all made possible by Two Lost Distribution. So I know a lot of people are jumping on Two Lost Distribution. We appreciate that. It helps support us, but you also get premium distribution for three free months. And Dame actually has an update about it because it just got better. Yeah, so we recently launched another update. We already had hella features. And obviously, I'm the director of communications for Two Law. So you're going to be like, oh, he's biased. And I probably am. But let me just break down some of the features that you can check out for yourself for free just using the promo code at odds to get three months free distribution. You could just log in and check it out. Everything from we distribute to more stores, 100% royalty share, reports and data, royalty splits, usage discovery, sales dashboard, pitch portal, green list and block list, usage dis- discovery, publishing administration, chart at registration, audio recognition, cover song licensing, audience management, promotional assets, YouTube content ID, YouTube channel monetization, Spotify discovery mode, contests and giveaways, delivery logs, multiple payout methods, two-factor authentication, team management access, send money directly, instant access to Spotify for artists, copyright registration. And I'm not going to keep going because you get the gist, but there's hella stuff that you get for even after your three free months, you're only paying $3 a month. So again, I am biased. I am the director of communications for two laws, but that doesn't mean I'm wrong. You should log in and check it out for free and just see if it's better than your distributor. So, yeah, we just the, the new update is crazy. The, the new the new analytics, um, you know, is definitely a lot more enhanced than I've seen other distributors in terms of, you know, w- what type of analytics you get access to. So a bunch of artists that I work with, including Ted Park and JTEC, all switched over to Two Lost from their previous distributors. So now I'm getting all their split requests from Two Lost. It's it's definitely being used. Shout out to everyone that uses it. And and you know, if you haven't yet, if you make beats, I don't know why you're not just putting instrumental albums up to see how the market is for that. Uh if if you haven't released music to the distributors just because of the cost, try it for free. You can upload a lot of music to these platforms in three months. And then once the trial period's over, your music stays on the platform. So you're you're covered. Uh, two loss.com use the code at odds there's a lot to talk about this week hold on there's la- lastly plan let me just let me just plug the two lost office hours that i host every week. oh yeah last week with with my guy drew de leon who's the co-founder of the digilog great conversation about like how to handle layoffs uh, then we talked about rollout strategies and a lot of other things this week today if you're listening to this on monday we're going to have my guy brand man sean we're just going to be talking about some of the do's and don'ts of artist marking in 2024. We were doing it on Zoom until some trolls caught a hold of the share your screen, share your screen function, started sharing some shady stuff. So we're like, OK, can't give people too much. You're going to have people playing games. So now we're using StreamYard and we're just going to stream directly to YouTube, LinkedIn and Instagram. And that that worked out pretty well and actually gave us some more coverage. So we're going to keep doing that and you can still interact and engage. You can ask questions in the comments and you can even come live and ask a question uh, because I post the link to StreamYard directly in the comments. So it's still interactive, but, you know, sometimes lame people don't have enough to do during the day and they just find stupid things to do on the Internet. So that happened to us once we did a stream way back on Zoom and someone got the link and they were yeah, they were playing uh pretty pretty common disturbing internet videos, but the stuff that whatever, it was just I laughed at most of it. it I think the sad part is just that like there's a whole troll culture out there and those people are embedded in every community and like the music trolls are crazy, especially the producers cuz there's like a high rate of bitch assness in the producer community where a lot of us are are introverts that just dwell in the dank shadows and then we still want to make music but our social skills are so bad so the only way we know how to interact with people on the internet is in an unhealthy antisocial way 
And so a lot of people invest all this energy into trolling, trolling, trolling. And their music is decent. They just never get anywhere because they are destroyers, not creators. You know, everyone interacts with a community in one of two ways. You're either destroying or you're creating. And people feel like they're of equal value, but you don't really get, you know, you don't get royalties off of being a troll. You don't, you don't get placements off being a troll. You don't have much of a legacy being a troll. So it's, it's something that plagues the producer community and it goes back to people just needing therapy. But I think producers, especially, you know, I, I did a whole interview recently um, with, with my friend at, uh, it's called Mad B, Mad B Club, but, um, or maybe it's not called Mad B Club. God, I'm bad at this. Over at Media 22, and his question, uh, his first question had to do with producers being introverts and getting, you know, uh, experience in the music business, sessions and all that, while still being authentically true to themselves as introverts. And I'm like, you know, being an introvert isn't the same as being antisocial, and it's certainly not the same as being uh, sociopathic, you know. So that's another conversation. I'm just saying, if you fall into the bitch-ass producer category, there's a way out. There really is. Just Yeah, if, if that's your life, like if you spend even a fraction of your day, like thinking about, oh, how can I mess up this live stream? I, oh, I think it'll be funny if I put porn on the screen and just really mess it up. Like it might that, be. <laughs> if that's your life, though, and you think about that any fraction of the day, um, I feel sorry for you, really. I really do feel sorry for you because if that's your life, man, you're missing out on a whole lot of other positive and productive things you could be doing with your... Yeah, you could be planning your, your next... Um, never mind, I'm not even going to joke about that. I'm too sarcastic and my humor is kind of dark. I just feel like a lot of these people are the ones that are more inclined to participate or orchestrate a uh, mass shooting. What do we want to start with today? Yo. <laughs> I didn't say that. Pan, you might want stats? I didn't I didn't hear anything that was I think my mic was on mute. Do we um Let's let's start because I got a little it's going to probably come out a little bit as a rant, but I've ran into probably, you know, four or five examples of this in the past few weeks. Um, there are a lot of people in the music industry that will exaggerate or just flat out lie about their experience in order to try to impress somebody or to get another um, opportunity and. You know, people are able to do this because you don't really have to show like a real certification to be in the music industry. You don't have to show a real degree, um, you know, and a lot of people take credit for other people's work and people don't really run behind them and kind of check to see if that person really did that. A lot of times we just go with their word. So some people are able to get away with this. A lot of people are able to get away with this. However, you should not be doing this, um, one, because you should have some integrity. And I know that's, that's uh, you know, not an idea that people really understand these days. But, but two, this is a very small industry. And if somebody does check and say, hey, I heard this person worked on this project, you know, what do you think about them? And then that person goes, that person didn't work on this project. You are going to be in for a very uncomfortable conversation, and it's going to be very hard to get that next opportunity that you were trying to get. So um, you guys have examples of this. Obviously, you don't have to name names, but I'm sure you've ran into this time and time again, whether it's producers that say they contributed to a record or uh, managers that said they managed somebody, but they didn't really manage them. They just had a conversation or maybe helped them out a little bit with some day to day shit. Um, I know you got examples. I know Aaron for sure has examples. Payne, you've been in this too long not to have examples. I feel like every woman in the music industry who's doing anything, I feel like every woman in life who's doing anything has to deal with men taking credit for their work. Um, but for me, I've had so many business partners 
um, that we're doing 10 to 15 on a good day, maybe 20% of the work that I was dragging across the finish line. And um, yeah, over the last two years, I've had a couple of them, a couple of the relationships end in not a great way. Um, And one of them ended very ugly. Like I'm like, literally just this week getting a settlement from that situation and it's like wild I essentially he tried to sue me saying that like whatever he owned the intellectual property for this event that we had that's massive and brings in a lot of money he owes me a ton of money never paid me I just parted ways he had become a shady business person but it was my intellect I would even say our intellectual property, but I funded everything at the beginning, all these different things. I like made this ship go. So when the lawsuit comes, when I start submitting evidence, even his lawyer immediately jumps to, oh, let's settle this. Because it's so evident <laughs> that it's me, not not even like, like his claims were she never did anything. She wasn't helpful. And it was like, clear that that was actually him, you know? So like, that's one thing, but he's using this as a case study and as proof that he's built all these beautiful things and going after a lot of partnerships, different stuff. So I found out end of last year during the lawsuit, he had gone after, again, this is why the lawsuit was so devastating for a while. He had gone after a partnership that I went after and told them that he had done the things that I had come, same thing, gave them the same accolades that I give them. I ended up losing the contract and it cost me a lot of money. I was very frustrated, but we got intel from people that I had on the inside that he completely dropped the ball. So now the contract has come back around this year and they literally asked us, they're like, we have to do it a certain way, but we need y'all to bid on this contract so we can give it to you. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you're gonna get found out And I could give multiple examples, but like specifically for me, it's like old business partners who keep like the reputation that they've co-built with me and they try to make it seem like, oh yeah, everything's cool. We're still good. We're running. But it's like, there's another example that I would love to give y'all. I'm going to tell y'all off camera with another partnership that's like, I just found out how bad the ship sank when I left. But yeah, like I think there's a, a lot of examples of people just taking credit for my work. And when I show up and I talk to people, they're like, oh, this makes sense now because I can connect all the dots. I can tell you how the idea started. I can tell you the expertise and how long it took me to get there. I can tell you why the things work, where some people are just like, oh, yeah, you know, like we just understand the industry and we see it this way. So I don't know. It's happened to me a lot. At this point, it's like I'm doing so many things and word gets back around to me somehow. And I claim my wins now. I used to try to play small or be like, let me not get in anybody's way. I don't want them to think I have an ego. I don't care. I built this shit. You gonna know. So I'm not running around being like, I did this, 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 and this. But if it gets back around to me or if I'm like walking into a room and introducing myself, I claim my wins. And if they're like, oh, I thought that was da-da-da, I'll be like, no, it was me. And here's why, you know? Yeah, you got you got to talk your shit sometimes. I mean, I'm I definitely am a fan of, of being humble, but I think we talked about this in a prior episode. I feel like it's a it's a balance of kind of knowing when to be more humble and when to talk your shit. Um, you know, some people might be watching this and be like, "Well, we'll and be accusing me of like taking uh, credit for other people because that's what Hops fans used to say. Hop, you know, all the funk volume fans used to be like, "Well, well, you're an example of what you're talking about. You take credit." And I and I didn't really go back and forth with them at the time because I knew they just didn't understand the business. They didn't understand my role. They didn't understand how much work I put in. But hopefully, you know, four years, five years, six years removed, just in seeing like how things panned out, who's kind of where where everybody is, you can see, OK, all right, Dane must have played some kind of role because I ain't heard from them cats in a long ass time. So. You know, not to put them down, and I hope they're all doing well, but there's a difference. There's a big difference. Um, so, Payne, you got examples of this, man? What, that, you, oh, you my know, God. I- it's damn near the norm 
honestly, especially this is the this is the double edged sword that is social media and numbers. Again, people are always upset about numbers when we bring up numbers. It's like it's not about the numbers. It should be about the music. It should be about the person. It's like numbers are helpful in literally every single career field. And I, for one, am glad that I can just cross-reference what people say with their numbers. I mean, artists reach out to me all the time and they're like, send beats, I'm working on something, I'm this, I'm that, my cousin is so-and-so. And that was the norm growing up. I remember in seventh grade, I had a friend who was always on the bus talking about, yeah, my cousin is cousins with the brat. And, you know, I'm a, a kid and I'm like, oh my God, that's this is so amazing. I, I want to meet the brat. And, you know, maybe it was true and that was fine because we were kids. But when I became an adult and I'm trying to, you know, uh, grow my music production career and everyone's using the same lines and these are grown ass men and grown ass, just grown people in general using these same lines that I heard when I was a kid. My cousin's this. I'm about to do this. You know, all the kids in my school were, were liars. Kids are just liars. They make shit up because they are children. They're childish. They don't understand how silly their lies sound, but they just don't stop doing it. And a lot of them end up in the music business. I, there was a guy that everyone was talking about in my city, and this is how bad it got. Um, someone came over to my house after I, I got my um, my very first platinum record. And it's like, there aren't people in my city really getting platinum records, very few. So he came over and he saw it because I had it hanging on the wall. And he was like, oh, that's real. I thought you were lying about that. And like part of me was like, damn, bro, you're in my house t saying that. But then I also appreciated it because that's true. That's really what the rumor mill is saying. And a couple years prior, there was a guy that that was either from here or was new here or something. And he was on social media and telling everybody that he produced, co-produced a big Gucci Man record. Big. And and he would double, triple down on it. He was like, yeah, I was in Atlanta. And he was even going online. I don't know. I, I didn't know the guy. I just met him in passing and he seemed normal. But what wasn't normal was the fact that he just kept posting about this, posting, bragging about it, bragging about it. And it was total BS. You know, he had nothing to do with it. But his big giveaway was that he said he was talking about, yeah, you know, when you produce a beat, um, you don't always get credit, but you you get your writers split. And I'm like, that's true, actually. So let me let me do an ace title search. He he wasn't even affiliated with a PRO. He didn't have a single damn title registered. <laughs> so the thing is this. You can lie and most people won't even check you. But the people that know the people who you want your lies to actually work on, it's not going to work on. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And that's why I love these databases and these numbers, because you can you can contact me all day talking about I'm the hottest rapper in my city. I can just pull up every single one of your social media platforms, streaming platforms, et cetera. And you really can't talk your way out of having five monthly listeners. I mean, you can't you can try. There are people with with seemingly no social media presence that will reach out. I'm like, let me just, let me look. And they have a 50,000 monthly listeners, 30,000 monthly listeners. I'm like, damn, okay, they're doing something right because they have fans. And you do some more investigation, kind of verify that this is, that it at least appears to be authentic, the numbers. Then you discover someone who's actually working hard and building a, a community of listeners. Whereas most people who are talking, they got to talk loud to drown out the reality that is their lies. And yeah. I, I'm I'm just, man, it's everywhere in the music business and I don't ent entertain those conversations anymore because nowadays time is the most valuable thing we have. And, I, and I, I learned that after a while. It wasn't like I have to have a conversation with everybody just because of fear of missing out. And I'm like, I know you're full of shit. I've been in this way too long. Cool, whatever. Yeah, here, here's my card that that's the, that's the thing like if you've been in this for a minute and you really have done some positive things like you can identify the people that are full of shit like just right off the bat like especially in the music business education space 
You know, that's why I support like the the, the entrepreneurs because I know that they really know this shit and they study this shit and they've been in it for a minute. Or the, or the brand man Sean, like I know who he works with. You know what I'm saying? I know when when he says things, I be like, okay, I, I can tell that that comes from somebody that's had some real world experience. But a lot of these other music business folks, and I'm not saying anybody outside of them is is is. There's a lot of good ones. I'm saying there's a lot of bad ones too. Um, and I can hear just right off the bat. That's how Aaron got on this podcast. Cause I was like, okay, I heard the types of things that she was saying. I was like, okay, maybe, maybe she would like to be a part of what she was doing. Cause I can tell she's been on the ground on the front lines, like working with independent artists and, you know, people that are just making stuff up or maybe just heard something and it's just parroting something. I'd be like, okay, this person doesn't really know exactly what they're talking about. It's pretty obvious. But for the people that haven't been in it that, that long, I can see how they can get fooled. I can see how, how somebody might understand because people get slick with their words and they might like the change of one word might totally change the meaning uh, or the depth of their experience that they're trying to convince me that they have. And I see that some people have different conversations with me than they will with somebody that's a little less experienced. Um, so people, you know, they, they're better with how they like try to trick people than, than they are with the actual knowledge of what they're trying to talk about like they're good at tricking but they're not they don't spend much time actually learning the business right because a lot of people they trick they'll try to trick you and i could see like if somebody was trying to like okay exaggerate their experience and then like try to like hurry up and get enough experience to kind of match what they said they could do but that's not typically what people do most people are exaggerate their experience and they just keep exaggerating they're not trying to learn they're not trying to actually get the experience they're just trying to trick you in the moment so they can get that opportunity um but yeah that shit is frustrating i feel like even if they were like a little bit smart they would ear hustle you know like that's what some of my artists used to do my artists used to try to pick up on phrases that i would say and then they would take that into like meetings or conversations and like say it so that they sounded like they were more ahead or more aware. Or it'd be like they would see one 15 second video on Instagram or TikTok and run with that. But then there was nothing behind it. And then I would kind of like come yeah. in and save them. So like to yeah. me, at least that shows that you're trying. But there is, like you said, there's a lot of con men out here who will literally spend more time discrediting other people's efforts and like finessing. And I'm like, damn, you could have just learned. And then that to me is like what frustrates me when people aren't as keen because I'm really keen. Like you may think that I'm locked in with you, but I'm just like bullshit, 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 bullshit. And my eyes are locked on you. But I'm not commute. I'm not doing. I'm not giving you no energy. So because I'm locked in, people are like, "Oh shit, she's really." I don't believe any of your shit. If you are full of shit, (laughs) I know. If you got a little shit, I know. My bullshit meter is very high. So I'm confused, like why people don't spot it. So for me, it's like when people get out here with the colorful language, and like again, last year I walked through like several people in public to their small audiences and behind the scenes trying to discredit me. And when people would come to me, I would just give them the facts. But I'm not like, I'm not going to paint a colorful picture. I'm going to give you my opinion and I'm going to tell you what I saw and what happened from, obviously it's still my opinion, but I'm going to tell you what happened because it's not as colorful. Again, a lot of people ended up siding with other people. I'm telling you in the last just month and a half of my life, I've seen so many conversations come back around and they're like, hey, this and this, this is starting to make sense. We see this. And it's like, yo, if you have to be so animated when you're delivering a story, you're probably bullshitting. You know what I'm saying? And I I like to tell stories, not lies. Like I'm a storyteller. I like to be interesting. But if we're talking about a business exchange or something that happened, I feel like there's key details that the people involved should have. And if they don't have those, then you should know this is some bullshit. Yeah. Folks be learning buzzwords, but ain't prepared for the follow up question at all like like, oh i didn't expect you to ask a follow-up i just thought you'd be impressed with this buzzword i just learned 
I also feel like if you're like, oh, no. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I see that in meetings and stuff all the time. I don't feel like that invalidates me. I'm like, I don't know. They're like, explain that to me. Or like, what are your thoughts there? Like, okay, oh, I, I don't know. I just started working on this or I just found out about this and this is what I know. But like, can you tell me from, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think that there's an issue with that. I don't think that me not knowing everything invalidates my experience. I feel like it's the bullshitters who want to try to pretend that they know everything. Cause I'm like, Everybody don't know everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know a little bit about ads, but I don't really run ads. So I can have the beginnings of the conversation. And then I'm going to be like, yeah, my business partner, Brandon, he does everything else. This is what I know from that. You know? Yeah. Don't don't dig yourself a deep asshole, even with something as simple as like forgetting somebody's name. Like, just be up front. Be like, man, I apologize. I forgot your name. Like, get that. Don't put yourself in an uncomfortable situation and let the relationship or the conversation continue, continue, continue. And, and you're like, damn, I don't even know this person's name. Just ask up straight up. Like we meet a lot of people. It's normal to forget names. You know, you should try to remember names. But, you know, and even I even write, you know, I, I write people's name down. And when I in my contacts, like I'll put some stuff in the notes of like where I met this person so I could easily like search it. So if I see that person from across the room the next time. And I know that they're going to bump into or I'm going to bump into them. I'll just do a quick search because I forgot their name, but I, I could do a quick search. I'll be like, oh, OK, boom, his name's Brian. And then, you know, I just just don't dig yourself into an uncomfortable hole where it's just going to continue to be uncomfortable because then it just creates a weird ass environment. So I'm anyway. terrible with the names, I admit. <laughs> well, you Terrible. don't leave the house that much pain, so there shouldn't be that many names that you have to remember because you don't. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I'm one of those those creepy uh, incel producers, uh, and it is funny because the contrast between me always being in the house and like you guys in a setting that's different every single week, it's really stark. I think I must be on the no fly list and I just don't even know. It's like a self imposed no fly list. Um, so <clears throat> what else we got? I, I, can we talk about this? Just this stunner girl situation quick. We didn't talk about it. I just found out some new information. So we're, we're talking about initially just kind of, and we've talked about it in the past, just social media behavior and, and conduct. And, um, Stunner Girl had this song with YG called Stand Up, and it sampled a Sierra song. And it was, I'm not going to bring up the names of the producers, but I was excited because it was some producers that have really been winning lately that um, either produced or co-produced the original. So it sampled Sierra. Uh, I thought it was a really dope idea. It sounded great. Um, and then suddenly there was controversy. And Stunner Girl was on social media cussing out Sierra and her team, among other people. And it had to do with sample clearance. We talked about Kanye West being denied sample clearance last episode. Now, there we had a lot of information because um, there's like a united front against Kanye West in the music business right now. In this case, it, it just sounded like run of the mill sample clearance denial or something. It's a really convoluted story. So I don't Why did I pull up the shade room? Damn it. Well, anyway, it's the shade room. <laughs> um, uh, on January 5th, Stunner Girl returns to the platform to announce the single was released. Blah, blah, blah. However, on Thursday, January 11th, so this was recent, Stunner Girl took to X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm not calling it X after she apparently removed the single from streaming platforms in a now-deleted tweet the rapper called Sierra and her team out. We all, all three of us go to therapy. It's fine. to get so, And I'm not saying that you're not going to say things you regret just because you've been therapized. It's not like a magic pill. But I, I think a lot of folks in the music business, and I'm saying this as someone who used to do this all the time and who will still occasionally do this, just go straight to social media and air out whatever grievance you have before even processing it and really getting the facts. So her main tweet, this is this tweet is full of a lot. She said, I literally hate when producers use samples. These artists be acting like they made the beat. I don't know what that means. 
It's so many people that use that beat, but Sierra's team writing me saying she personally contacted them about me, but anytime I done use the beat that was sampled by a white artist, they don't give a fuck. There's a lot in this tweet. So one, she hates when producers use samples, but she's used sampled beats before, but when they were white artists, she got clearance, which is like, you know, I think she means like when she uses a sample and they go to clearance, they want a re- like a big percentage of the of the record, a big percentage of the publishing, like like they made the whole beat. Like I think that's okay. I I see that. Okay, then I agree with her because I've I've sampled five minutes of a track and they take everything, or five minutes, five five seconds, even fewer than five seconds. Where I'm like, I know that there's no law about what you can use compared to what you have to give up. It's just that if I make the beat and your sampled portion is really, you know, equal to what I composed or even less significant, why do you get the whole damn thing? So I'm not a fan of the way sample clearance is traditionally done. All right, Stunner Girl, I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, and then she said she better go moonwalk through some venues and leave me the fuck alone. Uh, I, <laughs> what? And she just kept going because a lot of people were like, "Hey, you know, maybe you should calm down and not talk about this right now." The way you're talking about it, she said, "I don't care what some random people say on the net because you always the same people saying this lady was a man for you." I don't know what this is about. Yeah. I don't know what that's about. Um. I think that people should like if you feel compelled to go to Twitter to get your vent in, and I, I I feel compelled too, but I don't just do it recklessly. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you should have a separate Twitter that has no followers. It's just if that's you just need the act of like typing stuff out and getting it out. Um, and then quick correction, pain. Like I've been to therapy, and I think therapy is amazing, but I'm not I'm not currently going to therapy, and I'm not saying that I shouldn't. I'm just, you know, I just don't want. Oh, did I say we're all in therapy? I know we've all done therapy. Yeah. So my bad if I. In in the spirit of just talking about, you know, having integrity and being truthful and representing our our experiences in an honest way. um, I know nobody would call me out for that. Nobody really knows me like that, but uh, probably should go to therapy, but not currently in therapy. What there's a similar experience that I had this past week of just artists just getting emotional, like super fast and like just lashing out. And I kind of had to coach him through this because it was an artist that was being onboarded on the two loss and things were taking longer than expected. Um, and yeah, some of the communication I think he received was, was wrong or a little off, but long story short, some of the issues were because of what he did. And like you just, you know, initially you're just mad. Things are taking long. Things are mad. And it's like, hold on. I don't know what the issue is, but I do know that sometimes when catalogs get migrated, there can be issue on the DSP side. There could be issues on your side. There could be issues on our side. Just wait, like don't lash out yet because we haven't even identified the problem. And that's that's what artists like to do. They just get mad and start lashing out at everybody because the assumption is somebody did them shady because that's just what happens in the music industry, right? Everything is shady. So the, at the, the, the glimpse of something gone wrong, it must be a person doing me shady. So I would just encourage, hopefully yeah. you have somebody in your corner that could be like, hey, let's just hold on. I understand you're upset. You're allowed to be upset. But let's just hold on and let's let's figure out exactly what this is before we send our energy in a particular way. You know, just relax for us. Yeah. Yeah. And and to to, um, just conclude this particular story, one, Ozzy Osbourne is part of the whole Kanye sample clearance request denial. And I believe he's white. So I don't I don't agree with the whole white artist clear everything. But um, I think there was a twist, and and this is where I'm not going to say names, but the original producers of that sampled Stunner Girl track, I just reached out to see, because I thought the song had a lot of potential with the Sierra sample. And, like, obviously, 
if you're recording to the track you know there's a Sierra sample in it. So I don't I don't know why you bring the producers into the fold. I understand being frustrated, but they um they said, Oh no, we got it resolved. So I'm like, okay, cool, it's getting resolved. She also claimed that they had paid for sample clearance already. I I don't know. This is one of those stories where there's a lot being said, but nothing substantiated. And so I, I, it's just, it, like I said, it was convoluted, but ultimately the songs back out. It's a different beat. There's no sample in it. And when I looked at the production credits, the original producers were not named. And so I hope that's not the case. Um, they're having an amazing, the, the original producers are having an amazing run. So I don't think this hurts them at all, but it's just unfortunate if that's what happened but maybe you know maybe the the twitter tirade has something to do with it you know like if a rapper used my track and i disclosed the sample information and something went wrong during the clearance process would ha which had nothing to do with me and then i get cussed out on social media like it was my fault somehow i might say you know what i yeah i don't need to someone else can do this it, have have you have you guys seen because maybe ranting works sometimes and and maybe I'm wrong in a certain situation. Have you guys seen where there's been a successful rant? I'm like yeah, they went off and that produced the desirable results. It's like yeah, I did it with a with the car company that sold me my car. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I, I think that you know I think in situations where it's just like a one-off and there's no you know i don't know if you're going to continue to buy cars from this company or whatnot like not if, after it's, this. if it's just if it's just a one-off and you don't care about the relationship um then maybe but then you also just have to understand how people are going to view the interaction being public right because it might affect it might affect relationships that you didn't even that you don't even have yet Right. They're just like, oh, there's people like, OK, this person goes to the Internet to resolve their issues. I'm going to stay away from them. So they were going to reach out to you, but they saw how you move. And they're like, I don't really want to be part of a potential, you know, hops and dame situation. Like, I don't I don't want that. So, you know, we'll just go with this other artist who seems to be a little bit more mild mannered. Um, but there, yeah. there may be there may be some situations where people just popped off and it, it worked out well for everybody. I just don't normally see that. Um, hopefully, I, people mean, I think the the Risa Tisa thing happening right now is low key an example of that. Like the what? Granted, the what? Who? You know uh, who the f did I marry? TikTok. I don't know if you missed that wave, but basically, it's like a four hour 50 plus part series about a woman who essentially married a scammer during the pandemic and he was lying about everything that he had like he was saying he was a high level exec at all these different companies and all these different things and he his brother i didn't watch it because i'm just not that interested shout out to everybody who got through it but like the cliff notes is apparently dude is a con artist married her moved in with her was leeching off of her for years i don't know the conclusion but she came to the internet with her story and she's already made like millions off of the views on tiktok because it's such a long multi-part story and now she has like a publicist she's done like a a whole like live run on tv she's on the cover of these different magazines so like she went to the internet to air out her grievances and she looked crazy when she first dropped it everybody's like i would never tell anybody i got scammed this bad but now it's turned into multi first it was several hundred thousand and they're like yo this these are the stats now it's in the millions because people are catching on to what happened so she's winning and i think that the way that she did it was kind of like a cautionary tale she's not like angry or bitter which i don't it, it might i haven't seen the as many videos but like she doesn't strike me as angry or bitter so i would say to me she's the most recent example of somebody going to the internet to air out their grievances and actually winning so man i, I don't know how many views you need to have on tiktok to make millions but it's got to be damn near a trillion 
like because because stuff on TikTok, like you very or at least Ja doesn't make hardly anything from views on, watch on TikTok. Hours. Like so, that. it's over four hours. Oh, because oh, she watch out. Up okay, so I maybe yes. I understand how it works. So she has, yeah. So like that's the thing. Basically, how long people are on her profile? Because I I I, I didn't realize that either. I looked at a marketing breakdown on one of these pages that I follow, and it's basically the amount of people. And it's wild, too, because people are reposting parts of the story and she's not even getting paid for that. So it's the amount of traffic that she's getting to the platform, plus the amount of people who are staying on her on her page to watch through each of these different things. And apparently now it's been uploaded to YouTube. So now people can watch it in succession, all these different things. But if I'm not mistaken, essentially TikTok struck a deal with her. I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to speculate, but like it's rumored that they've struck a deal with her now because even in week one, due to watch hours, she had made over a hundred thousand dollars. And the person who was breaking was telling how she had done that. And now we're like three weeks out from that. It's picked up a ton more steam. And then I, I watched another breakdown and they're like, she's, if she's not in the multi millions, she's close to a million just from the TikTok stuff, but also because of the magazine covers and all the interviews she's doing and all the, the press run that she's on. So yeah, shout out to her. Yeah, I, I completely missed it. But I mean, I, I, th- I see something like that as different. Um, well, one, I have a lot of questions, like how you even, like, if my wife was a scammer, like, I, I, I mean, I'd be so confused. Like, I, and I definitely wouldn't share it publicly. I don't, yeah, I wouldn't share that. To me, that's a different situation. It sounds like she really like sharing your experience with with somebody that really is like a a, a super scammer. It sounds like she got a, a book deal in the in the works and a TV deal or a movie situation. Um, that's different than uneducated artists going through something they don't really understand, but trying to manipulate their fans into thinking that they got taken advantage of. Like you know, so I you're so I right. You're so yeah. right. <laughs> I I completely did. I, I I missed this though. Like I I think I, I might have seen the woman you're talking about because I saw some pic. I was scrolling and I didn't know what that was, so I just kept scrolling. Is is the woman heavier? She is a heavier black woman. Just look up Risa Tisa because I again I haven't watched any of the videos, but the streets are so hot about her. I know her story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, so yeah, I might I might have seen what she looks like, but I had no idea that's what it was about. That's crazy. There, there's a lot of stuff like this going on, even in the music business, um, and it has nothing to do. I, I, well, I don't know if either of you are familiar with what's happening with MIA and her child custody slash immigration status. That's crazy. Back. If you haven't looked that up, I vaguely saw some kind of conflict there as well I, but i have no idea what she going through. yeah it's 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 deep um but i know we're about at the halfway point so um so i think we're longer halfway we're, well you know whatever what but topically halfway i think what this can highlight though is just like how much content you guys are competing with Risa Tisa. Like anybody can come out with a story these days. You know, it obviously it used to just be like, you know, stuff that um, inside additional cover, like big, big stories, things like that. But now anybody can come out with an interesting story and just get a lot of attention. I mean, that many watch hours to get millions of dollars from TikTok is wild. So that took a lot of attention away from songs and dances and cute cats and things like that. Cause yeah, Risa Tisa. Now I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not compelled to listen to it. I'm not going to go watch any videos, uh, but at least I know what's, what's, what's going on in the world of TikTok these days. I thought it was a Netflix show. Cause it the way people were talking about it. Cause it has a title and every, who the F did I marry? I'm like, that's enough. I don't know why it's not. It might be that. Oh, she, um, titled, she titled it the great branding. Great branding. Yeah. I was talking. Um, so I was doing, so there's a Nyla Simone is an up and coming DJ who's pretty well respected. Who's getting a lot of love. I think she's weekly on the breakfast club. So she has a, uh, a showcase called certified vibe, uh, that we're, that we're sponsoring. 
And she also ha- does like live music reviews every Thursday. And they didn't have a name for it yet. I was like, yeah, you guys got to get a name. Like, it has to have a name. If you're going to do this every Thursday, you got to have a name. So if you got something that you're doing on a regular basis or some type of content series, it has to have a name, you know, so people can come to identify it, look forward to it. Um, you know, it's, 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 there's a million reasons why you should have a name. So if you got, and, and the name is important. That's why it took us so long to come up with our name. And um I'm working on so many different things. We got we just went back and forth for weeks about the the new movie podcast that we're starting. So we're starting a, uh, we have Blackbusters that celebrates black cinema, but now we have uh this will be the first time I say it publicly, but people on this podcast don't care. So it's it'll be called Real Remixes and this is taking more mainstream movies and talking about them to as if it, having a conversation if these if these movies were possible with an all black cast. So, you know, could Forrest Gump been made with all black cast? Damn, that's could, tight. Could, could, could we have done Mask or Dumb and Dumber with an all black cast? And what would that look like and who would we cast? So obviously, you know, we went through a number of different, different names. I wanted it to be Shades of Cinema, but that was taken from a YouTube channel. I really liked it. And then we talked about like trading spaces. Um, I thought that was really dope. Real remixes, uh, it'll have to grow on me. It's cool, but like, you know, pay attention to what you guys are naming things because it's super important and make sure you have a name. Yeah, let's let's cover this because I'm I'm kinda hot about this. The uh the you the the newest deception from Universal Music Group. <laughs> I look at this, 